Hey everybody, welcome to Home Recording Made Easy in Mix Tip Tuesday, where every Tuesday I show you a new mixing tip to help you make more professional sounding mixes in your home studio. Before we get to this week's tip, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Make sure you hit that notification bell and also stick around to the end of the video because at the end of the video, I have something I wanna give you absolutely free that's really gonna help you with your mixing training. So be sure to stick around. Okay, everybody, welcome to Mix Tip Tuesday. So this time out, we're gonna talk about how you set up your DAW to kind of emulate the signal flow of an analog studio. I get this question a lot from people. Um, they see me do it in a lot of my training courses and they wanna know a little bit more about it. So there is a way that you can kind of emulate or replicate the signal flow through some plugins to kind of give you the same kind of uh, signal flow that you would have in a real studio. So let's first talk about the way the signal kind of flows to the studio, a real studio. So if you can imagine for a second, where you um, are, have a band playing out in the live room and all their instruments are mic'd up, drum, bass, guitar, vocals, so on and so forth. All those microphones are gonna go into one of two places. They're gonna go into some kind of a patch bay and then from there, they're either gonna go into a multi-track tape machine, like a 16 or a 24 track multi-track tape machine, which a lot of studios would use. Um, and, or sometimes they wouldn't go to tape first, they go directly into the console. They'll go directly into say their SSL, their Neve, their API console, so on and so forth. So you could do it either way. Studios will do it one of two ways. Um, I like to set up my DAW where we go into a multi-track tape machine first and then into the console. They give us a little more color, a little bit more compression, a little bit more vibe, a little bit more bump in the low end. It's just like the way I like to work. Then from there, it's gonna go to the console, you're gonna go through your channel strip, and then it's gonna go to your um, mix bus on your uh, console, and then it's gonna go out to the master bus and then out to another tape machine. So I wanna show you how to do this with some plugins, and then um, you can set this up in your DAW as a template like I've done before. So we have a blank session here. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this multi-track tape machine across all of the tracks, and we're gonna use the Slate Digital Virtual tape machine. You can use any tape machine. It really doesn't matter. The reason why I like this particular tape machine um, for this purpose is number one, it's got two plugins. It's really two tape machines they modeled in one plugin. And you can see it here at the top right hand corner. They have the machine type. They have the two inch 16 track, which is what we're going to use on the individual channels. And on the master bus, we're going to use the half inch two track machine. Okay. So that's, they model two completely different machines. Then whether you use, you know, 30 ips per second, 15 ips per second, whatever you want to use is fine. We're not going to get into that today. And again, it doesn't matter what tape machine you use. You can use any one that you like um, but for this example, we're gonna use this. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna spread this out across all of our tracks here. So we'll take this and we'll just kinda drag it around all of the tracks. Again, now one other thing about the Slate tape machine that I like, and again, other tape machines will have this as well, is that it's low CPU usage. So one of the things and one of the, the issues you could have um, when you're trying to set up this kind of a workflow is if your computer doesn't have the horsepower and you're trying, you have a big session, like in this particular session we have, what do we have, uh, 26 tracks here, 26 audio tracks, right? So in this example, so you, know, you have to put 26 instances of the plugin and then we're gonna put more plugins. So that's something to be concerned about and to think about. If you don't have a high power computer, I'll talk about in a few minutes how you can maybe kind of do a modified version of this um, to try to save you on your CPU power and if you're running out of RAM and that kind of stuff. So first uh, first uh, signal path is the multi-track tape machine, right? So we're gonna make sure it's on the 16 track across all the individual tracks. Next up, we're gonna put up some console emulation. now. Again, from the tape machine, it would typically go to a console. So you can use a channel strip um, if you want, and we'll do that in a second. Or you can just do something like the VCC by Slate Digital. Again, this is a console emulator. Now this, is, now this emulates, I believe, the input of a console. Um, and there's six of them in this particular one. Um, and let's say we're gonna just say, we'll stay on the Brit 4KE, which is the um, SSL 4000E uh, um console, but whatever one you want to use, okay? So we're going from the tape machine into the console, okay? Now you can do, and what I like to do when we get to the next one here, and again, let's put this across all the tracks here and make sure that our, hopefully our DAW won't crash on us here. And I'll show you what the CPU usage when we're done putting all these plugins on, what it does to my computer. Now I do have 
um, an eight core processor with 64 gigs of RAM and a 2019 or late 2018 iMac Pro. So, you know, I have a kind of a highly spec computer, but just to give you some kind of a reference when we get to the end here. Okay, now from there, you can just say, okay, well, I'm going to tape, going to my console, and then I'm gonna start doing my EQ and compression, so on and so forth. But what I like to do, and again, just add a little more color, a little more flavor, is even though I have the console collection here, I then like to put a channel strip on, because I'm a big channel strip user. So if I'm gonna really emulate, I may get the 4000E by Plugin Alliance, which will kind of match up nicely with the Slate Digital VCC. And again, this is pretty good from a CPU perspective. And I would drag this on all my tracks as well. And hopefully our DAW doesn't crash. Sometimes it will if you try to put too many of these plugins on all at once. But Studio One is usually pretty good about those things. I can't say that about all DAWs, <laughs> but anyway. So let's put all these channel strips on here and if it crashes, we'll reboot. Okay, so now, again, some folks will say, well, if you're already going to the VCC, do you really need to go to the channel strip? Or instead of the the VCC, could you just go to the channel strip because they're modeling the input side of the console as well, apparently. And the answer to that question is yes, it's whatever you wanna do. Again, what I like about the VCC, it adds a little bit more color, a little bit more vibe, a little bit more harmonic distortion, a little bit more that analog mojo. Um, and then I double it up with a channel strip. But again, you can do either way, okay? Just something to consider, okay? Now, from there, now that on my individual tracks, that's all I'll do. And then from there, I'll start processing my mix using EQ and compression on the channel strip. And maybe I'm adding some additional processing outside after that, but that's my start of my signal flow. Now on my buses down here, um, I have some buses down here, drum bus, bass bus, guitars, keys, vocals, and such. Now I'm gonna put my virtual console collection. I'm gonna put the bus part of the plugin on this. So let me show you what that looks like if you don't know. Now, if you don't have the VCC by Slate Digital, you can also use something like the Waves uh, NLS, nonlinear summing, same kind of thing. And there might be a couple other plugins out there that do a similar thing, depending on when you're watching this video. What I'm gonna do for now is we're gonna use the VCC and we're gonna use the mix, bar, mix bus, excuse me, part of the plugin, because these are buses. Okay, and I'm gonna stay on the 4000E. Okay, the SSL, and I'm gonna put that across all of my buses here, which I have, like I said, five or six of them here. Okay. Um, and sometimes I'll even put a tape machine before that, but again, trying to stay more true to what it would be like in an analog studio, we're just gonna go with the VCC. Now I'm also on the very master bus on my main output, I'm also gonna put another version of the VCC here. And I'm gonna use the same console as I do throughout all my individual tracks. So I try to keep things consistent. So if I'm using a 4000E channel strip like Plugin Alliance, I'm gonna use the 4000E or the 4K, excuse me, uh, console on the Slate Digital. Again, just try to pair them up, you know, kind of nicely, but you don't need to do that. You can mix and match the stuff if you want, but that's how I like to do it. And then from on the master bus, now I'm gonna add um, a bus compressor, um, an EQ, and then a compressor possibly. So let's say, um, again, if we're talking about SSL, again, I might stay with uh, the SSL bus compressor. We have one by Waves. I also have one by Universal Audio. Let's, let's grab the one by Waves because that's what most people are gonna have probably. So they make the 4000E um, or 4000G bus compressor, the famous SSL bus compressor. Uh, let's see, where is it? Here it is. So we'll put that on here from here. Okay, so we'll have that SSL vibe there as well for doing an SSL studio. And then from there, you can also add some EQ if you wanted to have an outboard EQ on there, some kind of a really gentle kind of an EQ, you could do something like that. Or you could just go back to uh, the next step would be um, an act, the actual tape machine. So again, now I'll go put the Slate Digital Tape Machine um, on my master bus as well as the last plugin in the chain. And I would use the a half inch two track this time, okay? It switched the tape machine type. Now again, the speed of the tape is really up to you. My kind of general rule of thumb, and again, this is how I kind of start on my master bus, I'll usually use 15 inches per second. On the individual tracks, I might use 30 ips per second. 15 ips is gonna slow down the tape a little bit, it's gonna get a little bit more low end, a little bit more compression. 30 ips is gonna be a little bit more transparent, okay? And that is the basics of how you set up your DAW to be 
like the signal flow of an analog studio, okay? So in review on the individual tracks, we're gonna go tape machine, then a console emulator, and again, you can use the NLS by waves, the slate digital one like I'm using here, then I'm going to a channel strip, and again, regardless of what company's plugins you use, it doesn't matter. Okay, on our bus, that's our individual tracks. On our buses, I'm just gonna add the VCC here, okay? And then on my master bus, I'm gonna use the VCC, the bus, I'm gonna use the bus compressor, and then I'm gonna use uh, the a tape machine here as well. And again, you can also insert an EQ of some kind. You could also insert some kind of a color box, a saturator or something like that, which kind of does what tape does. Sometimes in an analog studio, they'll insert an, ex an external piece of hardware, but just to give you the basic lay of the land. And then you can save this as a template. So every time you bring up a mixing session, you're gonna import your wave files into your session. You'll already have these plugins already set up as kind of your analog studio. Now, again, to, before we end this video, let me show you kind of the CPU usage here. So as I said, from a, we look at our performance monitor, this is running at about 14%. Now, again, I have a, a 2018 iMac Pro with 64 gigs of RAM and uh, I think it's a six core processor in there. So I have a pretty high spec computer and we have 26 so we have about 75, about almost 80 plugins on this mix, okay? And we're at about 14%. Now, again, depending on your computer specs and also depending on the plugins that you use will depend on how much CPU you use. Slate digital stuff is really usually very light on CPU. Um, and same thing with plugin alliance. Whereas if you use, let's say the Waves Abbey Road stuff, like the J37 tape machine or something like that, which typically wouldn't be, be put across all the channels. But if you use multiple uh, instances of that, your CPU is going to spike through the roof very, very quickly. Okay. So I hope you found that helpful on how you set up your DAW, like an analog studio to kind of get you that nice vibe and that nice flavor. Now, because you stuck around to the end of the video, I want to give you a couple of free gifts. The first thing I want to tell you is if you have not been to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, head on out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com and click the orange button right on the homepage, because I'm going to give you five free mixing training courses. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. And I also want to give you a coupon code. The coupon code will come up on the screen here. It's YouTube25. YouTube25, if you put that at checkout, any course on my website will take 25% off instantly. Again, if you have not checked out any of my training courses, use YouTube 25 and get yourself a nice discount. And if you're someone that has a lot of my courses already, go pick up something off the list that you don't already have and save yourself 25%. And last but certainly not least, because we're talking about mixing on Mix Tip Tuesday, if you want to learn the craft of mixing in a very non-technical way, it's perfect for beginners and intermediates. Head on out to mixingmadeeasy.net. Again, all the links will be in the description box below. Mixingmadeeasy.net is for you. Absolutely, there's a video right on the homepage. will tell you all about it. And for a limited time, if you use the link in the description box below, you can take 40% off an annual membership. So for less than a small cup of coffee a day, the price of a small cup of coffee a day, you can have a full year access to all the membership benefits. Go to mixingmadeeasy.net and check it out today. And until next week, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com, mixingmadeeasy.net, and I will see you guys next Tuesday. Take care.